stuff don't work. There's a future for you in sales. <laughs> <laughs> okay, paper number 14. This is it. And it's appropriate. It's from somebody from Range. You know, how could that be? I'd like to introduce John Wright. John uh, has a bachelor's degree in education from Buffalo State and a master's uh, in geography from the University of Akron. He's been with the brains for 11 years, and he's going to talk to us about exploiting GIS for the non-GIS user. Go get him, John. <laughs> All right, everyone. Take a deep breath. We made it. <clears throat> and in 15 to 20 minutes, the committee will be showering you with gifts. <laughs> All right, so we'll get right into this so we can get going. Uh, so the office you're in over here right now has about 400 people. And you're now served by a GIS staff of seven. Um, and in the GIS department, we we're, we have a sort of a customer service uh, orientation. We try to help anyone and anyone who comes our way. Um, so as you can see here, it's just a, a sample of the departments we serve. So um, we're spreading the gospel of GIS around. Um, and so over the years, a lot of the map requests that came our way were your typical big plotter requests. Uh, but we were also getting burdened with uh, small stuff like tax parcel requests. You know, can you look this up for me, please? Um, and so that was taking up some time of the GIS staff. So, and we really, what we wanted to do was have a way for them to do it themselves and take that out of our hands and put it into their hands and give them a little bit of taste of GIS. So, um, so. The issues we had back in the years, and I'll show you what kind of software we've been using over the last 10 years, um, were either like viewers or readers, and you really couldn't do anything with them. Um, and you didn't want to uh, do Arc, Arc Map or ArcGIS because it was too complicated. So, and also our IT department uh, was asking us to see if we could find a way to not. Uh, hit the server so hard. So we had all these different things coming our way. Uh, so what software do we use? Uh, this goes way back for any of you more aged GIS people. All right, you'll recognize Arc Explorer. All right, it was awful. I had to go to each desk, install it, and then I had a save map that they would open. And they, had, they could either not save it or save as and keep their own version. But of course, naturally, everyone saved it, and it would crash and crash and crash. And it wasn't very good. Uh, it was really limited. You can see there's just no tools here. I mean, you know, kind of, it was free, of course. I'm not going to lie, it was free. But that's all we had. So then I got the bold idea to do art math. Um, bad idea. Um, it was just too difficult to teach someone who does not understand or use GIS every day. You're talking an engineer or a landman or a person in a regulatory who just needs a simple interface to work with. And so, you know, you open ArcMap, sometimes the toolbars don't even stay where you last left them. So, <laughs> it was just too hard. So, uh, this is kind of a breakdown of the last 10 years-ish of what range is used. Um, And obviously, you can see I've given the hints away. We're going to use we migrated to geocortex, but um, so uh, we're very, really happy with it. And I personally am glad I'm not teaching ArcGIS for one-hour classes to land people anymore. Uh, so what did we want in a web map? We wanted real simple stuff, not complex GIS stuff, but stuff that was you could almost like hop on like Google Earth, um, labeling, sorting the tables, identifying stuff in the map. Uh, ability to print, export to Excel, all that kind of stuff. Um, create buffers, that's a, also a big request. And then the GIS department had their own needs. Uh, we wanted something that was really easy to manage. The reason we hated Arc, uh, ArcGIS was it was pounding the server. Uh, it also, there were some license uh, issues with that. Um, no more logging into Citrix, that kind of thing, where we had it on. So uh, we had our own needs. So. We went around, we asked and asked, and I have to give credit to Mark Limbruner. He was the one who uh, ran with the web map idea to upper management, and they agreed, so thank you, Mark. And we went with Geocortex, who coincidentally is one of our sponsors here. Uh, so before, before we um, got it going, you can't, just, you can't just open it up and start 
send out there. You have to develop it behind the scenes and customize it. So, uh, a, a couple colleagues of mine met, and we went down to our headquarters in Fort Worth, and uh, we met with a design, uh, designer from Geocortex. We spent a week there, learned a lot. <laughs> it was, some of it was a little overwhelming, but I got it, and uh, we moved on. Then we met, came back here, we met with the department managers and asked them what they wanted, what they wanted to see, what layers, kind of tools we could develop for them. Um, so then the GIS department, we spent a lot of extra hours here late at night, came in on the weekend a few times, just to get this thing going, because we wanted to, I don't know if we had a hard deadline to get it going, but we were kind of like, all right, well, let's try to get it by, you know, uh, December 1st or something like that, you know, just sort of a, a soft deadline. Um, and so, uh, then we sent out a test site to some of our, some of the, the, the handful of people, I could count on one hand, who were landmen that knew ArcMap pretty well and got their, their heads around it. Uh, and they gave us their feedback and you know, they told us what they liked. And then we finally, uh, finally came around to making it ready to go. All right. I'm going to go to a live demo. But I need to know who here works for a competitor of range. Come on, I've seen you around. <laughs> All right, so when I was putting this together about two weeks ago, I got this thought in my head. I was like, what's the one thing that could get me fired? <laughs> so I thought, well, all right, I better narrow this map down so I'm not showing uh, all the proposed wells range has for the next 10 years. Okay, so if any of you thought you were going to come in here, like James Bond, <laughs> go back to your land manager and like, yo, um, not to worry, I've stripped the map down. <laughs> I really wanted to um, put a little uh, Bond theme trumpet music on, but I figured it would just blow up in my face, so I'm sorry. Um, okay, so the map you're going to see is a sort of stripped down version of what we use upstairs. Okay? Uh, so. Okay, so here's the map. Uh, it comes up to the general uh, Marcellus Shale area of Southwest PA that we are in. Uh, and so as you come in, it's everything scaled, so as you start coming in, stuff will start to show up. Come on. I'm refresh. I think it's been sitting all morning waiting for me. There we go. All right, and so you can start seeing, these are all of our drilled wells. You can find these on PA Iris. Uh, obviously, the parcels you can get from any of the counties. Um, and so you can zoom in and start seeing stuff. Uh, you know, it, it has all the typical tools you've seen in your GIS, but uh, obviously more rudimentary and simple, which is great. Because who are we targeting? We're not targeting the JS department. We're targeting everyone else. So. Um, so you can ID stuff, um, just really simple like this, and everything pops to the bottom. Oh, and I think we're getting cut off here. I was doing a training session here with some employees, and they're like, we can't see anything. I'm like, what? Because I was staring at this the whole time. So let me see if I can do this. Let's see if this works. There, it's a little better. You can see the legend, uh, the layers, the table of contents a little better. Okay, and so uh, it popped up anything I touched with my ID. Uh, you can see the pads and the well bores. Uh, all of these are exportable to Excel. Anything you touch or ID, you can do that too. Um, if I turn on, I'm going to turn off these wells, I'm going to turn on our leases just to show you something we've done here. So we have all of our lease records, like the files, the old paper files. They are been scanned, so we have something called Knowledge Lake. So you have to go to the home homepage, go to the department, type in the number, and go get the scanned image. But now, you can just ID these leases. And if you double click the record, there's the Knowledge Lake link. And you can click all of these little items. So you just come in, and so you save yourself a lot of time. So, again, the land team loves this. They, it broke down one day, like something happened, it stopped working, and I got so many calls. So, uh, okay. Um, we also, for land, we created a tool for them to do easier searches. So, up here we have what's called a global search. 
But uh, if you're going to do a tax parcel, you know it has lots of dots and dashes. So we, we came up with this, and I, I love the George Washington logo for Washington County. Um, okay, so you just come in, and as you type in, and you hit the six character, it starts to narrow your search. So you don't have to do the whole thing, um, and it takes, it'll only take what's actually in the data table of the shapefile. So uh, just come here, hit search, and it zooms it and highlights it right there for you. So it's a really clever tool. Again, they're doing it not calling GIS. So this is really neat. Um, also, we have this. I really like this. Um, so, yeah, I have base maps down here. I have topo. I have high-res aerial, all that kind of stuff. But we also have Bing Maps. And it centers where you last left the map. And it gives you a somewhat oblique photo you can rotate. Or you do Google Maps. And this one should come into Street View. So it's really cool. You've got two options to do besides the regular traditional aerial photo. So very cool. Um, how am I on time? Good. You have 15 minutes. OK. Uh, for another one for land we did, because land was the first department we made these maps for. Since then, we've branched out. We've gone to departments to ask them, you know, what would you like in your web map? Engineering, uh, regulatory, that kind of thing. So um, one, another tool we made for them was this expiring lease search. So this just brings up a table, and you can pick what's going to expire in the next 30, 60, or 90 days, or you can hit the date picker, but just for this exercise, I'll do the next 30 days, hit search. And it gives you a sheet. I can export this to Excel. Come on. Nobody write anything down. <laughs> <laughs> well, I figured no one would know what our lease ID number. I don't think they have any geographic context. <laughs> uh, anyways, that does export to Excel. It's, for some reason, it has it having to hang up. Uh, I also included some straight up websites up here just for convenience. So here's the Washington County Assessment page. And you could come in here and type in stuff. So we just try to make maps customizable to each department. So for gas marketing, we have, um, let me just show you this. And they really like this. So if I were to come in and turn on some of these compressors and meter taps, and let me zoom out here. And these are all in the ground. These are producing, or I guess, I don't know if you call it producing, but being used. We'll just come down here. And yeah, these have these names on them, Lowry, Labrosse. But we have tied it into what we call our Signet data, which is the live kind of pressure readings and previous day averages and temperatures. So this is really cool. These update, I think, I want to say every five minutes. So it's somewhat live. Um, and the averages update overnight at like midnight or something. So it's really cool. Uh, gas marketing really likes this. They can look at it. Now they have their own stuff, but when they're in the map, they can see it. Um, so for our surface ops teams, the guys that go out to the field to grade if a pad is going to be usable or not, um, we just added this one recently called the elevation profile. And for this exercise, I will just turn on a topo so you can kind of see where we're at. I'll pick a nice hill here. And you just hit the tool, hit the little select by polygon. I'll just draw a simple line from this top of the hill, down the river, and back up the hill. Hit OK. And, oh, there we go, here we go, chart view. Oh, it went away, there we go, let me try it again. I ran that this morning, I swear it worked. Anyways, what it does is it shows you the depression or increase in the land. It, it, uh, it's really cool. So yeah, you can read it in a token map, of course, but it, uh, it will really uh, help you determine where the slopes are and the, the climbs. And then, um, you know, if you do geocortex, you have to make your print templates behind the scenes. And we made six of them 
the tablet, uh, the tabloid letter and legal of uh, landscape and portraits. Um, you could pick a PDF, a JPEG, a TIFF, whatever. Uh, you could pick your DOS Grinch grid if you want. You can even pick a scale, you know, whatever. You can give it a title. And you can even hit this preview extent, which is pretty cool, because you can shift it. Maybe you want it more centered here. And you just hit print. And so you're not really printing yet, you're saving paper, you're making a PDF in this case. Um, and then if you're satisfied, then you can email it or print it or whatever. And it's usually really quick. Um, <laughs> Oh, okay. Yeah. I went to uh, Eurissa in New Orleans, and I did this similar, except not for an, uh, it was for just a generic GIS crowd. So um, I had I couldn't use this. I had everything was a screenshot, so <laughs> it was a little easier. Here we go. Open file. And there we go. It's all set up for you. It's not like ArcMap, you gotta go in and drag the north arrow and put the scale bar in and you know, make your extensions out and overlap the page. It's all done for you. Um, it even has the inset map, I put in the date, I put in the scale bar, all this stuff. So it's really cool. Um, so at this point I would just email, save, or print. Um, and so you know, I, I think you're saving a lot of paper that way. Okay, so that was just a general overview of the, of the web map. Um, you know, I think we really branched out in terms of GIS with this web map. So back here, uh, and what I mean by this is, oh, so we have uh, obviously all these maps that I've made for some of the other departments here. And you can do that, you don't have to, you can accept the default colors or whatever. It, this is just my personal preference, but I like, to, I like to color them and give them an identity. So I know when I look at the green map, it's the geology map. Geology map has different layers than the land map, for the most part. So, um, and there's a couple other here I've not shown, uh, just for space and time. So, uh, okay, so the favorite things about the web map, here we go. Uh, it's so easy to use. I mean, really. Like, I've had people who hated ArcMap. A complete 180 told me they love the web map. They can't stop using it. So that's <coughs> really cool to hear. But it's easy to distribute. All I do is send a link. And because you're behind the firewall here, it opens right up. Uh, you, you log in with your credentials. That's, you know, and we can, add, we can add passwords however we want. So if you have all those sort of safety mechanisms. If you took the link home, it, wouldn't op it would open, but it would just be blank. So. Uh, it doesn't hog the server. IT seems happy. I haven't heard from them. I'm waiting to hear how much bandwidth it is using, but since they haven't come to me, I have to figure it's, it's almost uh, non-existent. Uh, it only needs interconnection, no Esri license, so you don't have to count users. Um, the maps really load. Anyone tried to upload an aerial photo in ArcGIS? I mean, it just takes time. Here, it's not that, it's the opposite. And, uh, and it has reduced our request big time. They are now enabled and empowered to uh, look up a parcel, look up a lease, look up a well bore. We, we don't need to do that anymore. So, all right, I won't read all these, but I just highlighted in red. So I went around after uh, maybe a year, um, and I asked everyone what they thought. You know, wh what's your take on the web map? Do you like it? Has it helped you day to day? And I, I think I got about 40 returns back, and they were all positive. Uh, I was really, I was really pleased to see that. And so, um, you know, just highlight these here. Uh, but the one I like is the the bottom one. Um, some people are using it during their own meetings, like their own department meetings. So they have the map up. They can look up a well. They can see if a lease is going to expire. All that kind of stuff. Okay, so results, yes. Feedback has been good. Uh, skeptics who hated it now love it. <laughs> uh, and now, of course, meetings are conducted using the web map. Uh, I think it's really helped the cause. 
uh, some more stuff. Uh, we in GIS, I love the web map when someone comes to me and does ask me about a parcel because I don't have to open up the little binoculars and arc map and wait for it to load. And I love arc map, by the way. I'm not criticizing it. But it's slow. The web map, I just come in and I can get there quickly. Um, so, and we really have branched out. There were departments that didn't know about us. Um, so, and we're still reaching out. Um, there's still some departments that are holding out on me, so I'm gonna have to get tougher on them. Uh, and I think it's helped our job security. Uh, we are very fortunate here. Our senior VP is a big GIS fan, so he's in our corner. Uh, he knows the power of GIS. Uh, we're very fortunate that way, but uh, I think this has taken it to the next level. So with that, at the end of my presentation, I would, if you have any questions. <laughs> how are you handling, um, like when they're seeing their data real time, if there's any discrepancies, how do they contact you and say, hey, you know, this might be wrong or it's changed? So uh, it's pretty well known that I'm with one of the two GIS guys uh, here. Uh, so they can either email, email me directly, or uh, there's a little button in the web map, uh, email feedback. It comes to myself, Mark, and one of my colleagues, Chris. Uh, it comes to us three. So if one of us are on vacation, they'll get it. Um, yeah, and our doors are open. We don't, we're, we're very happy to help people and, and take care of stuff and make the data better. So if there's a mistake, we want it fixed. How often is your um, um, quickly changing data updated, say lease information? So the leases are in our SDE. So as soon as one of the GIS techs edits it in ArcMap and Scenes, it's updated. So it's instant. Um, so if you did have a layer that was just on a straight up drive, like I'm just making a letter up here, the G drive or the W drive, I would have to republish the map in order to see the update. But because it's in the SDE, it updates as soon as the GIS tech saves their version. Any final questions? Thank you, John. All right.